Hello and welcome to a look at the Alien B-Movie Dinosaur Western expansion for Unfair. Thank you to Good Games Publishing for sending us a copy of this expansion to check out. The Unfair expansion, Alien B-Movie Dinosaur Western, was designed by Joel Finch. Features artwork from Nicole Castles, Lena Cassette, Dave Forrest, Naomi Robinson, and Yoma. It was published in 2019 by Good Games Publishing. Note you do require a copy of Unfair to use this expansion, which plays two to five players, with games taking one to two hours, possibly more for your first couple games, depending mainly on the player count. This expansion has an MSRP of $34.99 US dollars. This was the first of a series of expansions that, from the looks of it, plans to cover the entire alphabet with decks. Yeah, I hope the game has enough staying power to get to Z. Now, the um, to shorten it, ABDW expansion for Unfair features four new theme decks for Unfair that can be freely combined with the decks in the base game, as well as any future decks that Good Game Publishing releases. This expansion also includes a number of new Game Changer cards, as well as an upgrade pack of replacement cards that do correct some balance and printing issues. So for a look at what you get in the box of this Unfair expansion, check out the Unfair Alien B Movie Dinosaur Western Expansion unboxing video on YouTube. Are we going to get sick of saying that by the end of the uh, review? We'll see. Now, basically, what you get is a long, thin box with a skinny but thick rule book and a five slot card tray that contains four made card decks, two smaller upgrade decks, and a bunch of cardboard counters that come pre punched. Now, the rules are fantastic with a section for each of the new theme decks, a reference for the game changers, an FAQ covering this expansion, as well as questions that have come up in the base game, and even includes a full summary of play for those who haven't played their original copy of Unfair in a long time and need a reminder of how to play overall. Now, the tokens are pre-punched. They're really thick. Uh, Good Games Publishing, all their tokens are always really nice and thick. Uh, these include new randomizers, alien influence tokens, a UFO standee, a dinosaur standee, as well as two hex tiles that are added to the board when using some of the decks here. Honestly, I have no complaints about any of the components here whatsoever. So we've got four new theme decks, some new game changers. How about you go over each of those and let us know what we're getting in this box and what it is they add to the core game. Sounds good to me. So let's start with an overview of the four theme decks. First up, you've got the alien deck. Now this adds a new resource to the game, Alien Influence. A number of attractions, events, and upgrades provide players with ways to generate Alien Influence each round during the guest step. Now the main use for this is to be able to purchase these high star value advanced technology attractions and upgrades. Now these new cards can only be purchased with Alien Influence and not purchased with coins, nor are you allowed to build them for free because of the result of another card. Now, in addition to this, there's also a system for alien abduction, which adds a new phase to the end of each round. During this phase, any park employees that have been influenced by aliens are removed from play, but shuffled back into the deck. Note shuffled back in, not discarded. Now, if it weren't for the alien influence, this could sort of easily be any other theme. But mm -hmm. with that alien influence, this is a whole new ball game when you add this deck in. And one of the most fun we had with this particular deck is looking at exactly what's going on with this alien influence. It doesn't seem like the aliens are all that friendly. Next up, we have the B-movie theme deck. This deck includes a mashup of other themes and rewards players for having multiple themes on the same attraction. There's also a new attraction type called the shop. Now, the biggest thing added to the B-movie theme deck is something called panorama scoring. Along with this is a new option to pay extra coins to skip a space when building attractions to just try to complete those panoramas. Now, many attractions in the game are part of panoramas, and when built in the right order, and when panorama scoring is active, which right now is only with this deck, but possibly future decks will also have panorama scoring, you're going to get endgame victory points for any panoramas that have at least two cards in it, and bonus points added for having a complete panorama. Now, along with this, to make this, again, a little easier to do, is a new attraction type called the Billboard. These are basically placeholder attractions that do generate a little bit of fame, but can be replaced by any other attraction in your hand during the event step. 
again, perfect for saving a spot for that one piece you need for your panoramic. It's interesting how little thematically this deck brings in terms mm -hmm. of gameplay, but what a huge deal the panorama aspect can become. Now, next up, we have the dinosaur theme deck, which, of course, is very much based on a popular uh, TV movie series and I guess TV series now as well. Uh, this is a high risk, high reward deck. Interestingly, the dinosaurs themselves are mostly upgrades that you add to your existing attractions. You can never have more than one dinosaur at a specific attraction. If you do end up with this, how that happens in a second, the largest star power dinosaur stays and the lowest one is discarded, which we always assume represented the one eating the other, just taking out the other dinosaur in some way. Now, when using this deck, there is a new step added to the game again, similar to the alien deck, but this one's at the beginning of the round and is called the dinosaur rampage deck. So you can kind of get an idea of what's going to happen. During this step, you have to roll dice for every dino you have in your park. If you roll high enough, nothing happens. But if you get unlucky and roll low, the dinosaurs rampage. Now, what this means depends on the actual dinosaur with the little ones not mattering nearly as much as the big ones like the T-Rex. And it usually involves them closing one or more attractions and moving around the park, which can then cause you to lose other dinos as noted earlier. Now, some dinos will even move towards the gate and if they get there, they escape from your park. Now, the other thing the dinosaur theme deck does, which is a totally new thing, is they don't have any super interactions. Instead, there are two replacement park entrances. Now, these are shuffled with the super attractions and randomized at the start of the game, but they don't require you to have five stars in your park before you build them. And while they're gates, they play them on top of your original gate. And what they do is they completely change your amount of guests and they add extra bonuses to your roles and do very dinosaur themed things. Definitely add it in for those folks who aren't afraid to push their luck, even with all the take that elements already mm -hmm. in the game. This deck is not for the faint of heart. Now that leaves the Western theme back deck. Uh, this is well-rounded, easy to use deck. Um, there is a new card type called the development. This goes to the left of your park with your employees. Um, the developments in this deck, what they do is they make your park bigger. They allow you to have more guests and more attractions, and even the ability to build two super attractions in one park. The Western deck itself and the Western theme cards are all about quality upgrades, and this deck introduces a new type of quality upgrade, which is always appreciated, and the theme cards let you build quality upgrades for free. So there's a big thing on medals and upgrades in the Western deck. Now, the final unique aspect of the deck is that all of the Western Panorama cards are set in a desert backdrop and can be played in any order. They can swap around any way you want. This means you can easily build a large panorama, but there's never a way to complete it. The downfall of this is that only actually matters if you combo this deck with the B-Movie deck. And as we mentioned previously, this deck was added to the recommended starting deck list since its introduction, so it's a great deck for anyone to begin with. Yeah, I'll get to my final thoughts later, but honestly, I wouldn't mind having the Western deck every time I play. Now, in addition to the four new theme decks, you do get a number of game changer cards in this expansion. Uh, these include cards like One for the Pot, which adds an additional theme to the deck and is especially recommended if you're playing two players. So you get three themes in there, even with two players. Uh, Prescience, which I think is a great sounding card that lets you see the upcoming cards in the city deck. And then there's Lunch Special, which makes things for a shorter game and more. So, all right, now that we know what we're getting, how about you share some thoughts on what you thought of this expansion? Is it worth picking up? So this type of expansion, this, this unfair expansion, gives me everything I want from a board game expansion. It adds to the existing game without changing it. It doesn't make it feel like a new game. It doesn't make it more complicated. It doesn't really add any weight to it. It just gives me more of what I love adding more replayability and more gameplay options to one of what was already my favorite games. Uh, the fact that they're evolving, shaping that game, and not just adding more bits, really shows a strong commitment to what this game is and the flexibility it provides. Now, the new Game Changers are a big welcome addition to me, to be honest. I really appreciate that there's something here to make the game shorter, 
and something else that can be added to mitigate some of the nastiest of the game without eliminating it. That prescience card. So what the prescience game changer does is you can see what's going to happen. So you know the bad things are coming, but you know what they are. So you can actually plan ahead of time and take actions to mitigate any possible losses. And then there's another one that I think is fascinating. This is the Jin's Bargain or Genie's Bargain, however you want to try to pronounce it, where each individual player decides at the beginning of the game if they want to take part in the city events. And it's an all-in, all-out kind of choice. If you don't take part in the city events, you won't have to deal with the unfair cards at the end of the game, but you also won't get the benefits of the fun fair cards. And what I dig the most about this one is this is an individual choice. Not everyone at the table has to go one way or the other. Some players can play with them in and some players can play with them out. I really dig that game changer. So I'm both excited and worried about how the expansions are rolling out as it's going to be hard to choose what content to play with at this rate. Well, they do give you the randomizer tokens that are specifically in there for those of you who can't make up your mind. Now, as for the new decks, uh, honestly, they're all welcome additions to the game. Um, of the four decks, I like Western the most. Very balanced deck. It doesn't really have any new rules to learn. Combos really well with other decks and honestly makes the panorama system simpler if you are using it. I do recommend if you try B-Movie for the first time, try it with Western involved too. I honestly, as I said before, wouldn't complain if every game I played had the Western deck in it. And I got to say, as Sean mentioned, the designers agree. This is now listed as one of the recommended starting decks for new players. So if you're teaching someone the game for the first time, the Western deck is one of the ones they recommend you use. That being said, it's tame, which is, I think, what you like about it to some degree. So if you're looking to ramp up that take that backstabbing and risk, you can leave this deck in the box. There is still some take that in there. The Gunslinger being the most obvious, which is a card that can take out any other employee in any other park. So it's not that it's completely free of nastiness. And the events, as usual, do have a top and a bottom. So they're just as nasty as any other deck. Now, my next choice uh, in order would be the Alien deck. I really like the Alien influence system and the high value rides and upgrades you get with it. Like there are rides that have three or an upgrade that has three quality upgrade or three feature upgrades just for one card. Like you can really ramp up the value of your park with these. Plus, we love telling stories about how the aliens are integrating into our parks. One of the basic cards that gives you alien influence is called the Alien Observation Tower, which is basically a spot you put on one of your rides where the aliens watch people in your park. And we like to joke about how, you know, they're up in the rafters in the movie theater or, you know, they're sitting at the bottom of the water park getting splashed all the time and they're in like all wetsuits, but it's actually aliens watching. Um Plus, one thing I actually enjoy in the Alien deck is there's always someone at the table every time we've used this that tries to shoot the moon and try for an either no alien stuff, whatever build, which is uh, one of the blueprints in the game, or the all alien tech blueprint that is worth 99 points before the bonus, though I've yet to see anyone pull that one off. This deck is a great option that blends risks and dangles big rewards but also has a good mechanic that can work its way or perhaps invade into everything else. As for the dinosaur deck, I don't love it, but I know people who do. Um, it, it does exactly what you expect to do. It's a high risk deck that can get you a ton of stars early. You can build your first attraction in this park as a T-Rex and build your super ride all in turn one with this deck. Trust me, I did it but there's always a chance your dinosaurs will rampage. The T-Rex closes every attraction in your park when it rampages. While there are some cards to mitigate this, there are two events that go in the event deck. Um, you can eventually get gates, but they are the type of um, upgrade that players can easily destroy through events. I, I, the, you can never completely remove the risk. For me, it just wasn't worth it. Like I was killing in this game because of my T-Rex and building a super attraction late the first turn. But then I had three turns in a row where my T-Rex rampage and I got nothing because I didn't have a single open thing in my park. It just, I don't think I'll be building a lot of dinosaurs when I play, but I can totally see other players loving this push your luck element. I, I know players that would be all in on the dinosaurs trying to see if they can have a dino on every ride and see how long they can maintain it. I fully expect there are people out there that the dinosaur theme deck made the game for them. Like it is now their favorite deck they're always going to use, kind of like Western is for me. 
Indeed, this is the one for those adrenaline junkies who want to push that risk reward to 11 or test their ideas about risk, risk management with a real wild ride. Now this leaves me with the B-movie deck. Um, I don't know, after repeated plays, I just found it to be kind of boring. Well, I do dig the the theme cards. Like I, I love the hey, play get something for every theme on a thing. And I love the shop. And like if I can guarantee that if B movies in, I get to build the shop, I'll be happy to have it in. The problem is if I'm playing with four other players, it's a good chance one of them is gonna get to build the shop before me. Uh the rest of the deck's just okay. I, I don't know, it just didn't thrill me in any way. And to be honest, I actually found the panoramas disappointing. They're just a, too difficult to complete. The first time I played with them, I was like, oh, man, these seem hard. But then the second game, we actually did some research and we actually did the time or sorry, our third time, third time using the deck. We actually um, went on our phones and looked up the deck build and looked up each possible panorama. And it ends up there in the back of the instruction booklet. Actually, remember, 25 page instruction booklet that comes with this expansion shows you all the panoramas, which probably would have saved us a bit of time. But anyway. What I noticed is for every single one of the six core game decks, the ones that come in the base game. To complete the panoramas, each one only has one panorama, you need a specific super attraction. Now, since these are randomly divided out at the start of the game, and you can only build one, your ability to complete a specific panorama is pure randomness. There, there's no skill or, or involved at all in being able to build one of those panoramas. Added to this, every single panorama, including the four new ones in this deck, well, there's more than four because one of the things actually has two different ones take at least one unique card with some needing as many as three unique cards like that is just a ton of fishing and hoping someone else doesn't build it and hoping someone doesn't notice that you're missing while even broadcasting it right like if i have this piece and this piece and i build a billboard in the middle someone knows i'm looking for that card now i just i don't know like i will admit the panorama scoring can lead to huge points so they shouldn't be easy so I understand why they're hard, so hard to build. But overall, I found trying to complete them was more frustrating than fun. This one, I feel, is the odd one out. While the panoramas are great, it seems a weak justification for the deck. You'll notice that in this whole discussion, we didn't talk about theme. There's no, like, no. it's B-movie. There's no, there's, there's no fancy dinosaurs or, or crazy aliens or Western shootouts. It's generic yes. uh, but perhaps that's the point if you want to score per uh the panoramas you've got something there but for me this deck is a when you've got a high player count throw it in for that scoring option of panoramas but you don't have to worry about messing up anything else with theme yeah like i said the, the theme in this now what i do think this deck is i probably should have checked is the one uh question mark theme card which can be hugely powerful which is, which is a, a ride where you can change what theme it is. Where if that does exist in this deck, that's another thing that's added to it. But just overall, it's meh. And like I said, the panorama scoring, I I tried. And, and then the one game we played, three of four players tried. And it just didn't work. So I don't know. It's okay. I, like Again, none of these decks are terrible. But there's just, those are them in my order of preference. I am kind of hoping that another deck in the future also turns on panorama scoring. Now, my only real complaint about this expansion, which is nothing at all to do with gameplay, is that while you can get everything into the base game box, it is a very tight fit, and you kind of have to do it just right. Now, this is made way worse if you have to sleeve your cards. Enough people have had a problem with this that Good Games Publishing actually has a page on their webpage to show you how to do this properly. And honestly, the way you do it with sleeve cards is shoving a bunch of counters underneath the box insert, which to me isn't really a solution. Yeah, and it's, no, it's still not the greatest solution we've discovered. However, there is a solution coming in the next expansion, apparently, though it's really frustrating to have to get another expansion to be able to properly hold what you already have. See, that, that's such a hard thing for designers to, to or publishers to get right. Like, you don't want to sell me a game like something we reviewed last week with a ton of error in it where you're like, what the heck? What am I paying for? 
Plus, you also don't know how successful your game's going to be. While they may be planning to do expansions A to Z, do they release a box that can fit A to Z with no actual indication they're going to get that far? Like, it's a tough thing. I honestly think the big box method that most publishers are going with really isn't a bad thing. That like by the time you're getting to your third expansion, you're like, okay, well now we're gonna do this. Like people are bought into our game, people like it. Now let's put out a big box that'll fit everything. Everyone knows why we're putting it out. There's no confusion. There's no one going, why is all this air? Or you just sell the box separately, which some companies have done very successfully. Fair enough. Overall, I think it's pretty obvious. I was pretty impressed by everything this expansion adds to Unfair. I, I enjoyed every single one of the new decks. Yes, even the B-movie, just one of my least favorite. I did enjoy some more than others, which I think is fair. I think everyone's going to have that. Each deck's unique. It does its own thing. And all of them integrate with each other and the existing decks well. And I got to say, I dig the additional game changers. That was something I didn't even know was going to be in this expansion when I started checking it out. If you've got a copy of Unfair and you enjoy it at all, if you're like, oh, I like Unfair, I play it now and then, go pick this up. This is one of those expansions that just everyone who enjoys the base game should pick up the expansion. Now, I wouldn't say this is a must-have. To me, a must-have expansion is something that fixes the base game, where the base game's okay, and this makes it amazing. That isn't this. This just, it doesn't fix anything, because, well, it doesn't need fixing. This is more of a, why wouldn't you get this? It's more options, more ways to adjust the game, more combos. Everything here just gives you more to love and unfair. And if you dig that, why not add more to it? Well, that's it for our look at the ABDW expansion for Unfair. When you've got time, be sure to check out the review section of the blog over at tabletopbellhop.com for a more detailed look and lots of pictures of this expansion.